Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well, okay? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a good trading day. Um, you know, let's kind of rewind uh, from last night's video. Uh, we talked about this potential uh, double top, okay? Um, if you guys remember, I'm going all the way back to last night's video, uh, we talked about the area here that it got rejected off of supply. We started talking about how most of the beta names were putting a bunch of lower highs, especially on the 60 minute channel. And a lot of people, um, again, if they didn't pay t close attention, you know, we're really gonna get caught. And I, I think if you look at the final scoreboard today, many won't get a really good feeling of why the market sold off. But again, if you believe in technical analysis, and, and again, I, I, I think fundamental analysis is fantastic, I do. Um, if you are a value, investor okay uh if you are a trader and you're trading day to day week to week again it's a completely different conversation it's like uh it's like a thoroughbred uh asking a zebra where do you go shopping for your stripes it's 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 comparing apples to hand grenades so the idea that traders have an opinion what a stock is going to do six months from now or investors have an opinion to a trader what the stock is going to do an hour from now is a completely different conversation. And again, for me, in this, especially in this whole uh, corona environment, again, as I, as I talked about this thing uh, literally every single day, again, I'm just taking it day by day, man. There, there, is, no, you know, there is no macro thought process. Um, I, I look at the charts every night. Um, I look at the players in those charts, the components, especially again, uh, I follow uh, the tracking of the QQQs very, very closely because, you know, pretty much 95% uh, of all my trades are the same stocks. So um, I try to get an idea of what the market's telling us, what the group as a whole is telling us, and then I make my uh, decision and I make, make my research based on uh, what I'm seeing, the, the collection of data uh, for the next day. And, you know, we talked about on the video yesterday um, how I believe that, again, you know, nobody was talking about the destruction of equities. We're, we're just on my day by day uh, trying to get through this whole corona mess together and trying to see what the macro universe is uh, telling us. The question is, are you hearing it, right? So we gapped up this morning, okay? We gapped up uh, this morning. And again, you saw uh, MMM, right had a big big gap this morning and even caterpillar was up and again this was kind of my whole point for the last couple of weeks when i'm talking about the markets are continuously discounting okay bad news again if you look at the caterpillar numbers i think their their income was down like 20 percent. something was down top line or bottom line something was down 20 percent. i didn't really uh, get into it but the point is at some point there were you know this the, the stock was surging the stock went as high as uh, 118 this morning, but it, but again, it really does show you how the market is trying its darnest to kind of discount. And when you look at what's happening this evening, right, you have kind of a tale of two cities. You have Google uh, going up, you know, 44 percent, and you have AMD uh, going down 4 percent. Now the question is for tomorrow's session. And again, we'll get to the macro point of why I'm picking one side or another. Um, you know, the question is for tomorrow, is AMD going to drag down the semiconductors or is Google going to uh, kind of pull up everything on its, uh, from its bootstraps, like the, you know, all the nets, the Facebooks of the world, anything to do with advertising, uh, click customer acquisition, all that stuff. Uh, your Facebooks of the world, um, you know, your, your Amazons of the world, all that stuff. So that's the kind of question going forward. Since predominant representation of the QQQs are semiconductors and biotechs, I am leaning towards the downside. And there's a macro, and there's a macro base on that. Okay, we've been talking about uh, the over under uh, two thirteen level in nausea. Okay, in nausea, this is this has been the ultimate line in the sand. The problem is, and you you know you're, you're seeing a lot of people, especially from the swing trading aspect, starting to get very very frustrated because the bull and the and the bull and the bear side they can't seem to get that really ironclad control of that line. And every single time we we seize control of the two thirteen. 
13, we get a one or two day rally and then we fall down. Every time we go below that level, we get a one, two day decline and then we go back up. And today, big, big reversal, uh, market gapped up. We talked about the ability of the bulls reclaiming that 213 area, staying with it. It didn't do so. Everything got rejected off supply and we got a you know, pretty aggressive move down. And if you look at the NASDAQ composite compared to everything else, the Dow was basically flat, down 30 points. Uh, S&P was down 15 points, basically flat. It's the NASDAQ uh, composite that was down one and a half percent. And that's the most important part to me. Again, it doesn't make a difference what 30 stocks do for me for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's more important for the names that I trade, the healthy sentiment factor who has control. And again, if you look at the QQQs today, you know, pretty much a sell off uh, into the close. Google is propping them up a little bit, but again, we will see tomorrow which side uh, wins out. Does the semiconductors get pulled down because of AMD or does Google kind of prop everything up? And, and again, why tomorrow is gonna be very, very interesting. It's a pretty big day of earnings, okay? You have uh, Tesla coming out tomorrow. Uh, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll absolutely see. We have Tesla coming out uh, in the next two days. We also have Facebook coming out. Uh, Thursday, we got Amazon, we got Apple, right? So we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on. So we're not going to be able to tell the further sentiment, okay, until this week is kind of over, at least the big names, until kind of Friday, maybe even Monday or Tuesday early next week. We're not going to get a true sense of, well, is this market going to completely discount everything, completely go numb uh, to Corona headlines and start really, really reclaiming levels and start moving back up to this 225 level on the queues? Or uh, are the bulls finally going to be right? This market can't rally forever. The market's still locked down. The economy still sucks. Everybody's still dying. We're still trapped in our homes. And we're going to start retesting the lows. I don't want to get too dramatic. It was kind of for the, for the effect of the video, right? Nobody cares. Um, more important, guys, again, every single day is its own momentum. Like I've been saying for years, every single day is a completely different animal. Uh, yesterday, one of the more aggressive sessions uh, that we saw in an incredibly long time, right? We had ridiculous moves, just ridiculous pivots yesterday. And today was a little bit more quieter, but I, 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 I do always try to try to really stick the point home. It's not how many trades you put on, it's how many trades you put on properly. And now, as much as everybody wants, like that day we saw yesterday and Friday and Thursday, one of these massive pivots, everything is running, everything's collapsing. Sometimes you need a day of kind of mental step back. You're looking at the landscape, you're picking your spots, uh, you're, you're really seeing macro levels being confirmed, and you try to take advantage of it. Again, does everybody want that 10-star trading day? Absolutely, with the 20 pivots, everything's going nuts, absolutely. But again, sometimes you get two, three, four really good solid ones. You make your day, you go on to the next day, and again, the next day is only as good uh, as the next day's uh, starting pitcher. So if you look at uh, today's area, and again, we, we you know it, everything is very, very calculated. Like, like we talk about uh, every single day, I, I really do put a lot of thought uh, into, into these setups. These are not just you know, take a shot, let's see what happens, here's your stop, loosey-goosey. It's, it's very, very important that every single element of the PS60 theory gets confirmed both technically, okay, and it has to complement what's going on. So for example, if you see a stock that's breaking out and the futures are collapsing, again, you gotta be, you gotta use common sense. Do I really wanna be that smart guy to try to, try to pick a, a needle in a haystack? So, it, you know, sentiment is important. Watching the futures on your entry is important. Uh, order flow on the option side is definitely a plus, okay? So for example, if I'm looking at, I'm just using an example, if I'm looking at Netflix like we had today, uh, one of the more aggressive pivots of the day, when we have Netflix, for example, and we're watching, for example, the 420, and we'll get to the specific pivots in a second, and I see you know, a bunch of near-term buyers come in of the 400 puts, the 385 puts, the 375 puts, it's much easier to get conviction that way. So again, they kind of complement each other. But again, common sense is, is, is obviously a must. 
Uh, expansion days obviously are plus, but again, it's very, very important just to stay in business, okay? Uh, one trade is great, 100 trades are great, but again, if you're not trading them properly and using common sense via technical analysis, then again, it doesn't make a difference how many trades you're gonna put on, you're always trading from behind, behind the eight ball. So uh, let's talk about today's session. Again, this is pretty much last night's video. Again, it's important that we treat what we see, uh, not what we want to see. Again, tonight we discussed a potential double top. That's exactly what happened, right? Exactly what happened today. Uh, double top, again, got confirmed when the market got faded uh, right at the open. Again, it's very, very important to understand and embrace uh, technical analysis. And then we started kind of going through one by one. Again, there wasn't that 200 pivots. And again, exaggerating, but there wasn't one of those days. But again, it was very economical, uh, seamless, good value. And that's the most important part. We're trading because of the good value. Uh, and the results were pretty decent. So uh, ZM, I was watching pre-market, uh, 168 needs to build, uh, never got there. Um, I actually like this thing as a short tomorrow. Um, you know, so here is the 168, just to guys, just to show you what I was looking at. So here is the 167.85, 167.62. So this whole channel is 168. So I was watching this 168 uh, for a build on top of that, obviously never got there. It went straight down. We'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about the obvious it's the next setup tomorrow at morning strategy. Um, Netflix, this is the big one. I, I, you know, we talked about this, uh, this morning. I, I kind of of felt that this was going to be the day. Uh, I didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect a $16 candle. Okay. Uh, but I did believe today was going to be the first leg of the next leg down. And we started talking about Netflix uh, 420. Let me just give you guys uh, an area where we were talking about here. So here is, I don't know what this is here. So here is the 420. This whole channel here was 420. You see that? This whole channel here was 420. So the numbers that I put that were very, very important, especially in the live webinar, uh, 4, 420 was the 60-minute channel that I was watching. Uh, 418.88 was the previous day's low. And 413, this was the magic number that was last week's low on this rising 10-day moving average that needed to confirm. And once all that happened, I mean, the stock just got destroyed. Uh, congratulations. Um, I minimized the trade a little bit. I really did. Um, I kind of screwed up. I, I thought it was taking a little bit too long on that 413. So I, I did okay with it. Um, Should have been a lot better. Should have been a lot better. I know a lot of you guys did really maximize the trade. I kind of screwed up a little bit. But again, as we say all the time, let your worst trade be a one that you do well on. So uh, here is the whole breakdown. Took out the 420. Took out the 1588. Took out the 413. And really, really collapsed. Uh, all the way down to the 403 area. Uh, again, I, I said it was going to go. I, I said it was going to go down to 404. Uh, here was right here. I, where was a uh, six move under 303? So I said it was going to go down to 404. Yeah. So 404 next cover area, and it got down to 403 and change. So really, really big move on Netflix. I, I, I wish to say I, I maximized the trade, but I did screw up. I definitely screwed up here. Um, Tesla, I didn't put into the channel, and there was a reason why. Um, last night we saw the stock go down to go down 15 bucks and this morning it was flat so I was very very hesitant to put it on a pivot into the channel the only reason why for all you guys who are in the live webinar obviously you guys know um, I'm, I'm speaking play by play uh, before the pivot during the pivot after the pivot everything in between for, unfortunately for all you guys in the live pivot feed you, you're not getting the benefit of the play-by-play. -play. So if a stock stalls out, if we see something very, very unusual in the potential pivot, you know, we're getting out of the trade break even. It's very, very hard for me to turn around and say, hey, by the way, you know, hey, by the way, on the Twitter feed, this is what's going on. I can't type that fast. That's the whole point, uh, the value of uh, the live webinar. So I didn't put this pivot into the feed. And most ironically, we actually didn't have a pivot the, the rest of the day. We were watching some upside pivots, and we'll show you in a second, that never confirmed, but we didn't get a clean look on Tesla. And this was, again, one of the very few days uh, I didn't participate uh, in Tesla. Hog was good, you know, who would have thunk it, right? Who would have thunk it? Harley Davidson, uh, Harley Davidson was good. We talked about this right here. Uh, this 2090, what was it? 2090, 21 needs to build on Harley Davidson. Here is the pivot right here. Here's the 2090, 21 area. Nice move, you know, went to, you know, 22 and change for a $20 stock, it's a pretty damn good move. Uh, Caterpillar went pre-market, put in a high of 18, never got never got back. Um, I caught BYND pretty well. Uh, BYND, $100.75 if it builds below can flush. So here was the pivot on BYND. 
right? Here is the pivot on BYND right over here. The sneaky pivot right here was $100.80. Everybody see that, right? Here's a sneaky pivot. This is what we talk about sneaky pivots. So it came down, it came down, went down to like $100 and like 20 cents, sat around there. Um, I shorted the stock, went all the way down to like 98 or so. Uh, initial move to like 98 and change. Uh, I made some covers, made some good covers. The last one I used break even on my runner, which I got broken even on, and then the stock kind of started rolling over. But this is a good trade. I still like it for tomorrow uh, for lower prices. Went all the way down to like 97 and a quarter. Uh, so big move there. Actually, a pretty good move there on that. Uh, again, I did I did okay with Netflix. Should have been a lot better. But again, sick move. There was a seven dollar candle and then went down uh, another nine. Uh, nice move there. Perfect move on BYND. Uh, Netflix got destroyed. And I said, I'd love to see this 9750s on my runner. Unfortunately, I got stopped on my runner break even before uh, it saw the 9750s. Bummer, but again, what are you going to do? Uh, good value so far, again, for all you guys. Again, uh, 404, good cover area. Uh, we got the news pretty fast on Boeing uh, that there was some sort I forgot the news was already this morning. It was some sort of... Um, probe something other i mean it's such a long day i can't even remember so 130 if it builds below can flush uh so here was boeing right so here was boeing here's the 130 right here's the 130 on boeing and flushed down to like 127.70s uh, again like i said not a lot right not a lot of one of those prototypical 20 you know, everything going crazy but again it was a pretty you know, it was a pretty solid it was a pretty solid day considering um, not a lot of hiccups, not a lot of headaches, just, you know, pretty straightforward, seamless day. And the most important part is, again, we go into the next session tomorrow uh, with a clear head. And that's the most important part. Uh, again, 790s, I was looking for that area, which obviously never built. And I believe that was it. Oh, by the way, um, by the way, big, look, look at the call buying, you know, look at the call buying going on on Alibaba, just for the, for all you guys, for FYI, for the September uh, September uh, 205 calls. I mean, this is millions and millions of dollars here are uh, being bet on on just kind of a put, putting it out there. Um, yeah, Netflix never confirmed back to the upside. Tesla never confirmed back to the upside. And I think that was it, right? I think that was it. And 409 needs to build. Yeah, never, nothing ever came uh, back close. So uh, ultimately, uh, you know, solid day, you know, solid, solid day. I wish I, I didn't uh, minimize uh, Netflix, but again, you know, let, like I say all the time, let your worst trade in the world uh, be a good one. Uh, BYND was pretty solid as well. Uh, tomorrow, you know, again, I, I want to give, um, you know, I want to give, you know, I know where the queues are gapping up after the close. Uh, Facebook is running up right now. Uh, Google is running up right now. I, I want to kind of give the sell bias the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't mean it's going to translate into a sell session, but again, um, you know, I'm just looking at previous data. Every single time we close below 213, we continue. We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. I know Boeing uh, is before the close, and then after the close tomorrow, you got Facebook, you got uh, Tesla. Obviously, Tesla uh, will be the big one. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Um, and with God's help, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.